The future of uh, business in mining, especially in Africa, uh, seems quite bright. I think um, the political arena is, has changed for the better in terms of just general calm um, and excitement about the future as, as it would be for any, for any country um, going through the same type of process. Uh, so that, that being said, um, Africa is um, also changing, the landscape in Africa is changing a bit as well in terms of the politics, so a lot of countries are becoming more open and accessible for uh, South African businesses to move into, they're taking away the partnership, um, the forced partnership type um, models. We are um, Axflow AQS liquid transfer. Um, moving into some of those markets, we we are very involved in in the SADC countries. Uh, obviously, Zambia is a is a big carrot for everyone. Uh, we all we all trying to get ahead of that pack. Um, the positioning in terms of of our business model is to is to lead by innovation and. In the current market, innovation relates directly to efficiency. So um, we've brought along very good um, international brands. We've, we've been with them for at least 20 years. Uh, we're the sole importer for the Warren Wrap product, so Sandpiper and Versamatic on the AODD side. We've recently engaged the supplier for EODD, so electrical uh, double diaphragm product, where um, air, uh, the availability of compressed air is, is, is an expensive commodity so it's not as available anymore as it was in the past and a lot of new projects start up without compressed air. Um, so we're covering a bit of that market, um, probably more in industry than in mining at this stage. Uh, the technology is still very new and in the test phase. Um, but our existing suppliers um, uh, by, by design or or people that are innovative. Um, they've done a lot of research and and it's it's as if you you get the feeling that something is is perfect um, and it cannot be improved and then they come up with an improvement so uh, this time the guys on the AODD side Sandpiper versus Somatic um, have come up with um, two products the one is Valor and the other one is Evolution X and it really is an evolution uh, in the AODD industry uh, in terms of efficiency. It's pro it's 30% more efficient, um, either efficient or um, delivers more um, water or or uh, mud or whatever it's pumping. So um, that's that's a big step ahead. Um, I, I I doubt there's another player in that segment at the moment. Um, so. We try and position ourselves that that we kind of lead on the efficiency side uh, because that tends to draw um, a lot of a lot more attention than than pitching something that is um, kind of commoditized um, in in the mining segment. So uh, a lot of products um, that we do, we we quite big in in solar applications in mining. Funny enough. Um, sampling, uh, de shaft dewatering, some of the some of the mines are turning to solar. Some have invested in their own solar power plants, so so that's interesting. So solar hybrid technology in terms of control, uh, switching between DC and AC. Um, we launching new products in the in the high SG pro um, liquid space. So, uh, in fact, we use this this show as a as a as a bouncing board for our um, big slurry pump, go up to 110 kilowatt, but it's for very high SG products. Alternative energy is becoming um, a theme, uh, even in mining. Um, it used to be uh, an exclusive to agriculture, where we also play a role. We have a big product portfolio, but a lot of what we use in agri. Uh, and in irrigation and in domestic market is also used in mining so uh, a, and a lot of it is variable speed drive type technology most most of our products now variable speed drive um, moving away from the old tech where you have a, a, 
a soft start and a soft stop. It's all it's all uh, electronics now. So we have uh, the advantage of having the product and having the control system. So we don't outsource anything um, that we deliver as a completed project. And we're seeing that um, efficiency pumping above ground is also gaining um, uh, a lot of attention or it's, it's growing in stature and it's growing away from the, the old tech. There's a few hundred year old companies that um, that are celebrating or have celebrated their existence and, and the ones that have moved te technologically um, are the ones that are around and the others are, are basically fading away. So you have two choices, you either grow or you go um, is really where we're at at this point. Let me start at, uh, probably at the, at the biggest part of what our market um, segment in mining involves and that's dewatering on the face, um, underground dewatering. Uh, so typically a mine would have a central compressor station, they'd be generating um, a lot of compressed air, a lot of losses between the transfer of energies uh, and uh, it all adds up at the end. Um, the bill in energy often um, is the cause of a mine closing down or slowing down because it's just, I mean, it just, it's, it's, it's not so much the exchange rate or the commodity pricing as it is the energy bill, um, especially given our history in the last couple of years, and I'm not going to mention any names, but um, uh, we all know who we're talking about. So um, hence uh, tr trying to be independent um, from the grid. Um, so on the air side, the biggest savings are in products related to to air operation, so energy transfer from air to, to hydraulic. Um, and a saving on the versamatic and sandpipe range is of 30%. If you take the average mine, you probably have um, two to 300 pumps operating at the same time um, on the face and intermediate dewatering. Um, so if you're saving, uh, and that probably represents a third of the mine savings. So you're talking about a, a direct saving of 10% um, without really doing much except moving to a new technology. Um, the new technology is cheaper, funny enough. Uh, the, I think 3D printing, AI, robotics have, has, has changed the landscape a lot in the last in the last five years especially. So you can go from 3D scanning to having a printed product in a day. Um, it's, not, it's not like it used to be. So there's, you've got access to um, digital media, everybody has. So there's no place to hide with inferiority in terms of product or to um, lose focus of, of the fact that everything is open to everybody now. It, it's full disclosure time, so um, you really need to get your ducks in a row when it comes to presenting efficiency as a um, USP to the market. And I think that's what, that's what we're trying to do and, and getting right. There's an old argument, um, we call it the air electric argument, so mines don't want to be stuck in an environment where they are <coughs> um, connected in any way to having to produce compressed air. It's, re it, it's an expensive way to go. The reality is that uh, it is the easier way to go because air is not harmful. The pressures are not off scale. Um, there's no real danger in, in failure of hoses or any equipment that is connected to, to that service. Um, where electricity you need specialized people to install, to move um, and as the phase progresses every day they they um, drilling and, and blasting and the, and the progression is the problem. You need to move two or three hundred pumps on a daily basis and to extend an airline is the easy way to go versus um, reinstall something electrical. So. Um, I know, I know a, lot of, a lot of mining engineers um, have a lot of arguments about um, the future of, or the airless future. I, I think if we, 
if we present um, the council argument with the efficiency on air, it makes a lot more sense. Um, so I think the future is a combination of, of compressed air um, and some electrical applications where um, uh, movement of product is, or movement of, um, of the pump product um, is not really essential. So fixed installations, always electrical, um, but the, the mobility of certain products uh, in, in many ways, um, the physical mobility and, and the efficiency and ease of moving an air operated product um, will, will be around for a long time. So hence we develop or we, we're going with the guys that have got the most efficient product in the market. We have a third dimension um, in looking at looking at a potential opportunity, and um, it's linked directly to um, Xflow uh, Group, uh, and the group is quite big. There's 33 companies in it, so, so we're the African footprint for Xflow, and they have a very simple strategy. It's called 10-50-50. Uh, so. It moves along in time, um, so it remains a 10-year strat plan and, it, and, it, and it's always the vision, but really it's 10 years, 50% uh, less carbon emissions or carbon footprint and 50% change in business type or business source of income. So we strive to, to um, grow laterally uh, in many cases we we seek to uh, to be the specialists in certain fields um, so that we have control over the entire function we we not very keen on supplying a part or a component of a process we want to be able to control the entire process so we invest a lot of time and money and training in into backup um, our, let's call it our promises. Uh, we have a lot of technicians out there, we do regular service, we engage in service contracts, so we try and be proactive rather um, than, than be the ones causing failures and, and stop stoppages in production, which then obviously affects um, mining in a big way and and the figures are staggering if you if you work out what a what a day or a two day stoppage is so yeah, when we get involved um, product wise service wise strategic um, it's control of the entire function from start to finish so um, building complete sets having um, control over the setup and and the commissioning and be able to um, have somebody local um, so we have on that point we have eight officers nationally um, so we close to the source of the customer um, we very active in platinum uh, chrome we active in gold amongst others um, iron ore and we are venturing into coal uh, we have a new products um, lineup that we that's specifically um, designed to to work in, in coal mining for for surface dewatering um, uh, flame proof applications that we will be launching soon so we're looking to start 2025 with a bang